thank you for inviting you, Mrs. Castillo. Um, um, I think I give a bit of a policy negotiator's perspective. I'm, I happen to be the, the negotiator for services. Um, our colleague who, who does in particular data issues, telecom issues, is in Geneva because we also have the TISA negotiations ongoing. As you know, we have several negotiations at the same time. But I'm happy to, to, to step in for him because we negotiate these things obviously in, together. I think we heard a, a very impressive way, both from, from Joshua and from Rene, sort of the business case for, for data flows. And of course, as a, as a bureaucrat, um, there's not much I, I can add just to say that obviously we've heard the, the, sort of the new buzzword in trade policy is global value chains. And of course, data flows are a key element of these global value chains. Obviously, um, Global value um, data flows is one element of global value chains. The other important elements are sophisticated logistics, as we know. Sophisticated logistics means uh, express delivery, means transport, and we know there we have a few issues with our American friends in terms both of maritime and, and air transport. What I want to stress is data flows is one element of global value chains, but there are other elements which we need to try to address um, in our in our um, uh, trade relations. Um, I think what has not been mentioned so much, but what is also important, um, is that we have a whole kind of kind of new industry uh, which relates to digital business, um, the, the new social media, cloud computing, which of course we also have to see how we address in a, in a trade policy environment. And then of course we have the Internet of Things. Uh, which uh, I think um, uh, Joshua mentioned before also, um, which is, is more and more important. I mean, we have trucks sending technical information all around the world um, to production centers and headquarters. All these things um, are new realities which a trade policy negotiator 20 years ago wouldn't even know what it is, and now we, are, we, we have to deal with that in our trade policy world. Now, what, does, what do all these issues mean for trade policy the issues Joshua and, and Rene mentioned? Already back in the 90s, <coughs> data flow was an important issue in one particular sector, financial services. Back in the mid-90s, um, the negotiators of the GATS, of the General Agreement on um, Trade and Services in the WTO, realized that in one particular sector at the time, in financial services, data flows was an issue. And therefore, in the so-called GATS understanding on commitment in financial services in, 90, uh, in the second half of the 90s, the negotiators inserted already a clause on data flows. So, uh, in a way, they were innovative, but just for one sector, just for financial services, because at the time, apparently, therefore, this was an issue mainly for financial services. What the EU did, and, and other, other countries as well, like the US, we then translated this um, multilateral sort of um, development in the area of financial services and data flows into our trade agreements. So, if you look, for example, in the Korea agreement the EU has, you will find specific provision on data flows, but just for financial services. So the um, Korea agreement um, reflects, if you want, um, the consensus at the multilateral level that there is a big issue um, on data flows in one particular sector in financial services. Now, of course, the question one has to ask um, ourselves is, why only financial services? Well, it is because financial services in the 90s was apparently the sector where data flows played a bigger role. And nowadays the question is, is it time to expand the rules on data flows, which up to now have been limited uh, at the multilateral level to financial services? Is it time to expand those rules to um, other sectors? <coughs> now, I've mentioned, and before I mentioned uh, data transfers, in a, in a kind of a neutral way, because a lot of these data are technical data, um, financial data, but of course we also have a lot of data which are personal data. And that's where, from a policy point of view, the more tricky issue starts. I think we all agree in this room, and probably beyond this room, about the importance of data flows. What is more tricky and what is the classical 
balance to strike for for policymakers, Parliament and Commission member states, us negotiators, is how do we strike the right balance between data flows on the one hand and privacy on the other hand, as far as data, personal data are concerned. We all know that not all data are personal, but we also know that many data are personal and it's not always easy to disentangle no personal and personal data. Many of you know, and I think uh, the Libe Committee has recently put this out uh, very clearly also, <coughs> that there are um, provisions at the multilateral level um, which try to strike that balance. This is the famous Article 14 of the GATS, which basically says um, you, you can uh, protect uh, personal data through your data, pro data protection uh, provisions in a slightly convoluted legal language. Um, what we have done, the EU in our free trade agreements, we have actually copied and pasted this Article 14, which allows you to, to implement your data protection laws. We have copied and pasted that into our bilateral trade agreements. So in the case of Korea, where we have a provision on data flows for financial services, we have copied and pasted um, the Article 14 word by word into our trade agreements. You will remember um, that the Commission has um, given a very clear position on the relationship between data flows and data protection. Um, our communication of November, I think, 2013, um, trust in EU-US data transfers, you know the policy context of why this communication was, was done. There we, I think, if you read this, if this is still the, the policy, policy line which has not changed over the last year and a half. <laughs> the line there is clear. It says data protection standards will not will not be a part of trade agreements. I think that line is, is very clear. I mean, it's cast in stone. It's like our Bible. I think President Juncker um, has also stated this very clearly in his, in his speeches. He has said, I mean, I quote him, we will not sacrifice data protection on the altar of free trade. I think a politician can be can be clearer than bureaucrats, and I think uh, this is this is very very clear. So I think this is the the background against the policy background against which we operate. <coughs> On the one hand, a clear recognition that data flows is one of the really important things of a 21st century agreement, as our American friends always call it, um, and that it's clear that data flows is an important component of, of the global economy. But on the other hand, a clear uh, policy decision on the EU side that no trade agreement will cover data protection issues. Data protection standards are dealt with outside trade agreements. As you know, we have a safe harbor um, um, discussion. We have an umbrella agreement discussion on issues of, of data related to law enforcement. So we have a clear <coughs> um, dividing line, trade data protection is not subject to discussions in a trade agreement. And I think that policy line is, is, is very clear cut. Article 14 type of provisions uh, make clear that you can implement data protection laws, current and future, so also future data protection laws, as they might emerge from our internal discussions, in, irrespective of any, any provisions um, you may have on data flows. So I think that is a very important policy line. I think our American colleagues understand our line. We've made this very clear in, in our technical discussions and with them they've seen of course our policy um, uh, papers, they have seen our speeches. So I think that is a very clear line. It's now of course up to us negotiators to find the right balance and to implement what is our policy line into, into the agreement. I think that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Looking forward of course to any questions you may have later on.